Hello everyone, welcome back to Manufactoria 2022. We, um... Last episode we finished all the stuff- enough stuff in here that we could move on out of the hub. I could also do Caddybot, um, or indeed the challenge. But instead of any of those, I want to go back to Yum Division for a bit. Um, <clears throat> there was some discussion on the Discord about the difficulty of, uh the puzzles that were rated three stars here. You may recall when we did Yum Division that the top two of these were uh, marked only three difficulty, which I guess is purple? There, and uh, now Sandwich Police, I believe, is the one that used to be rated purple, three stars, it was here. I put some time into that on, on camera and then eventually gave up. Um... And so I didn't even look at the one that was, like, supposed to be a harder version of Sandwich Police, which was Bread Balancer. But after some talk on the subreddit where they were like, where, you know, people were like, oh, you know, okay, maybe maybe the maybe Sandwich Police is hard enough to be red, too. And this was changed. So I, I thought, you know, let's just look at Bread Balancer. And I looked at it, and, like, I haven't written anything yet, but it seems totally easy and obvious. Like, it'll take a little bit of work, but it's not... There's no algorithmic challenge here. The goal... So you're given, um... One or more red, one or more blue, one or more red. Same as Sandwich Police. But the property you're asked to validate seems much easier to me. Although... Well, right? <laughs> um, because So the algorithm I imagined for this one is... You just stamp a single blue on before you start looking to separate the two red groups, right? And then you follow this process in a loop. Remove one red, copy all the blues, remove one red, copy all the blues. If at any time, when you enter the copy one red section of the algorithm, there are no reds there, uh, if it's the first copy red, then you go ahead and scan and make sure there's none left in the second half. Um, if it's the second copy all reds, then you immediately reject the robot. So that that's like that's work to make it happen, but it doesn't seem like a hard algorithmic problem at all. It, you just have to notice, oh, I could put an extra blue in and use that as kind of like a pseudo-green, right? So maybe it's hard when you first get here if you never played the original Manufactoria because you don't realize that green is coming up in the future and you don't think of modifying the input in that kind of way. But if you think of that, this puzzle seems very easy. Well, not very easy, just it seems simple and you have to like work out the details. Whereas Sandwich Police, I still don't understand how to use that uh, basic idea, I don't think. I don't know, maybe you can, like, um, so what, what would you do exactly? You would put a blue on. Remove one red. And then it's tricky. Because what you want to do next... Well, actually... Yeah, because the problem with this one is that you're removing the blue that acts as your boundary between reds. So you don't preserve the invariant that there's always a blue in between your reds. And so you have to put in some work to ensure that that happens. But maybe you can do that by when you're in the step where you copy blues, you first check to see whether the next one coming is a blue, but then how do you know you aren't skipping over this and reading the blue that limits the input? I don't know, it seems hard. Uh, this one doesn't seem that hard. 
I'm sorry, I'm, I'm checking the Discord now. I asked about this. Yeah. Uh, yes, someone is remarking that some time ago they said bread balancer seems easier than the purples in this section, even though it's marked red. I don't know if I agree with that, but... Oh, well, <laughs> I do, actually, <laughs> because I looked at Doe Spinner and Sandwich Police, and I thought they were talking about these. It wasn't easier than these. But anyway, okay, let's... We spent, like... No, I can't, I can't see my uh, recording software. How long have we been... <laughs> we spent five minutes doing nothing. Let's solve a puzzle, shall we? So, as, as I said, it's not going to be trivial to write down, but the basic idea, I think, is sound. So you write a blue on before you get started. And then you... Um, copy blue... No. There won't be any blues, right? There could be a blue. If there is a blue, it means you've consumed all the reds. Um... In which case, you need to just scan and make sure there's no reds ever uh, before the puzzle is over. So that's that's easy, right? We'll just put um, something like like that in. So if the first thing you read is a blue, then go through the puzzle or the input, looking for reds. If you find any, it means there was an error. The left red ran out, but the right red still had reds in it. And if you don't, if you completely consume the input without meeting that condition, you accept. So that's easy. Um, if you... Oh, hang on. Uh, we probably need... Be able to get back to that state. God. So this is mm, this is the start position, and this is the way to re-enter it without stamping another blue in. Although I guess you could. It wouldn't hurt you to add extra blues. It would just take up time both when writing them and later when erasing them on your way out. Anyway, so you'll never ever run into this white area. That won't happen. Because you know there's always blues, at least two, on the input. So if you read a red, don't rewrite it, but do um, start copying reds until you get to another blue. Again, this white can never happen. When you do get to another blue, it means you've left the... the first red area. And what you must do then is copy the blue section completely that you're in the middle of. However many are there, you want to put that many back. So... Like that. Again, it can never run out here. Um, if you have finished copying blues and you get to the red area... Well, okay, first of all, what happens if you finish copying blues and the tape is empty? Is that possible? No, because there are blues on it. Fine. Ah. It is possible that you run into a loop forever, though. Right? I see. The problem is, if there's one more red at the beginning than at the end, the whole tape has suddenly turned into one solid mass of blues. And 
And when you try to copy blues, you'll never finish. Hmm. Maybe this is not as straightforward as I thought it was. This thought like what if you pre-process the tape to replace any number of blues in the middle with just one blue so that you don't run into this problem but you still run into this problem That's enough that you can never tell. Well, no, that's not true. I was gonna say that's enough that you can't that you still enter an infinite loop, but you don't have to. Um, you could. If you made sure there's only one blue in the middle, then you wouldn't have to loop copying blues. You could just copy one and then look at the next one. If it's blue, the red section is over. If it's red, then you re-entered the red section. You have to be careful to rewrite the blue in the right place, but that should totally be possible. Okay, so... So if we have a pre-processing step where we stamp a blue, copy all reds, replace middle span of blues with only one blue, copy all reds, Read a blue, write a blue. Oh, he made this flash. Is that one, uh, wasn't, it didn't flash before, right? I mentioned that I was constantly confused about like when I was holding an item and how to put it down. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if this change was in response to that. He did say he made some change. It, as you saw earlier, I accidentally, you know, did this. So I don't think it really helped me, but. Okay, maybe this is supposed to help somehow. Or maybe it was always like that and I'm just noticing now. Anyway, so, okay, uh, how do I leave this mode? I guess I just... Oh, I'm not in this mode. I am in this mode? How do I... Okay, whatever. Yeah, this isn't flashing anymore, so okay, fine. We, 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 we have to start with a pre-processing step. Let's put it up here or something. We stamp a single blue. We... Oh, that's wrong tool. Oh, I need an entry as well. We copy all the reds. And as soon as we see the first blue, we... Copy all the blue. No. Not correct. We read all the blues, ignoring them, and then we write a single blue out. Then we copy all reds again.
And then once we read a single blue, we put it back. So this is our pre-processing step. Let's test that. So if I have like red, 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 let's just put three in, or even two. It's enough to prove the concept. So, so something like this. And I test this. I expect to get out blue, red, red, blue, red. I didn't. I put this blue back in the wrong place. And therefore kind of combined... Wait. Oh, whoops, I need to write a red back. When I... Finished copying all the blues, and then I read a single red. I didn't write that red back. And the order should have been blue-red, because I'm kind of hanging on to... Okay, hang on. <laughs> I wrote a blue, I copied the reds. I read a blue. And then I read a red. So I should put back the blue and then the red. Yes, okay. So in fact, we can just um, reuse this red inserter. Not inserter, stamper. Like so. And I guess I would probably flip this as well. So let's run that test. Yes, so I, I put in red, red, a, a two, one, we could call this input, right? And then I canonicalized it to this two, one. Except that the blue is at the end, which is, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's the only way I could do it. I could put it at the front. So now I'm in position to start doing this, basically. Okay. So I can then take all this stuff and put it like here, basically, right? Here even? No, I can't go quite there. Um, I do need this. Uh, this is not the state I want to enter. I need to enter this state when I'm done copying. Um, so if I put it here, like that, well, <laughs> why am I, I don't know, I don't need to worry about the layout really right now. Um, but also I could just rearrange this so that it's in the right place, couldn't I? I can't actually multi-select. Oh, I can multi-select! Oh, you are... Thank you so much, Pleasing Fungus. Okay. Um, so I pick this up and rotate it like... that. Oh, wait. I didn't grab this thing, which I needed. So it has to be... <sighs> I'm multi-selecting this and this and this. putting it here, right? Yeah. Let's make sure that, that actually works. So... 
yeah, we make it to the this machine that I designed. And, uh... Yeah, okay. And, and the tape is in a desirable setting. Okay. Now, oh, this thing is all backwards and stuff, but... Now that I've fit them together like Petetris pieces, I can reorient them so that right is the direction it used to be, right? Um, so just take this whole thing and do that with it. Oh, but right, I actually did... I forgot. I need some space here. Because I need to be able to get to this state again. Well... I could probably arrange it so that I get to this state, so that I want to stamp blue on before I re-enter the loop. Yeah, that's probably possible. Okay. So now we have the main problem of running over a normalized input. What have I written so far about that so far? It was so long ago. Um, we begin by reading the input. If there, if it was blue, then we just say, oh, okay, the left red is empty. Go looking over the whole tape, and if you ever find a red, throw it away. Throw away the robot. That is correct, I think. Otherwise, you read a sec- you copy all the reds except the one you just saw, and then read a single blue. And then you put it- mm, don't put it back. Don't put it back yet. Did- Did he- I, A mistake that I made all the time in recent videos was like I held right click or something, or I held left click and dragged over pieces and they just disappeared. And that doesn't seem to happen anymore. There must be some separate tool that, like, I mean, okay. I can do this, that's fine. Oh, is that like, which of these is active? And like, if you're in... I was just spending all my time in delete mode instead of in copy mode? I don't know. I see. So if I No, I see. So if it if I've recently picked up a piece and I dismiss it by right clicking, it takes me to delete mode. That doesn't happen if I was recently in like this mode and then I right click. I stay here. Okay. Hmm. So anyway, I, I read a blue, and now what I need to do is read again. Um If I get a second blue, I believe I junk it, is that correct? Because I read a blue at the beginning. I read all but one of the reds, so there was at least one. Then I read a blue, and then I found a second blue, which means the second group of reds is gone too soon. So I should reject the robot in that case. Again, the white output is impossible. So if I see a red, then it means there was at least one red left in the second group and I should copy all but one of them. So let's do that. So copy all but one of them. And then when I read a blue, it means I've reached the end of the tape. So I think I can just go back here. Right? This seems like it ought to be correct to me. Let's just test it on my example input first. The one that I made up that seems relatively simple. Skipping to here. And then just like, let's run it at normal speed. We put the blue at the end. 
copied all the one red. Get rid of blue, we ate all the one red. Hang on, there's not enough blues left. Ah, yes. I read two blues here. I read I read a blue here and didn't replace it. So I needed to Once I confirmed that indeed there were enough blues and I had read a red, I need to put the blue back. Okay, try again. And now we're re-entering with the first red group is red, and then there's a separator blue, and then the second red group is empty, and there's a separator blue. So we should hopefully detect this, right? We say, oh good, I found a red. I copied zero reds. And then I read a blue followed by another blue, so it goes straight into the junk. Okay. So we can obviously improve on area a little bit up here. Oh, I didn't even read the intro text, but Satisfying Subs was rocked by Scandal yet again as customers reported shockingly lopsided sandwiches. Regrettably, Satisfying Subs' lawyers were better than ours. They'd snuck a clause into our earlier contract that required us to help them out with this problem, too. Now we fixed it for them. I asked Jada, we were working to obsolete her jobs, roboticizing everything. What would she do next? She'd find something else, she said, smiling. And once we obsoleted that, too, I asked? Maybe she'd work for the robots, she said. Okay. So... We can easily improve area a bit here, um, just by scooting this all to the right, if nothing else. Right. All right, so how did I do in... Yeah, not surprising. Beating castle, though, that's something. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with just solving this at all, right? It's my first four-star problem that I've solved. Could use four fewer things, huh? I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm just really happy I figured out, like, well, okay. I agree this is a fairly hard problem. Is it four stars? Is it three? I think it's fair to call it four, because I, I was spending like 10 minutes on some three star problems, and this cost me like 20 minutes. So, fair enough. Um, I don't think I want to move on to Sandwich Police, though. Like, I don't understand how to use that insight here. Do I? Like, I can put a blue on. But in this case, I can't afford to normalize the input to replace the two middles with one, can I? Because I need to know, like, I, I need to keep them the same size relative to the other reds. So I can put before I start, but that's it. Then I have to somehow enter a mode where I... Well... Maybe I can maintain the invariant that there's at least one blue in some different way. I don't... Okay, here's a thought. Usually what I end up doing in 
puzzles where you're when we're in counting down is detect zero of something by noticing that I've seen the next color. In this case, I can't do that because when I because the color group that comes next um might already have been erased. Right? But if I try to detect that there's exactly one of something and treat that as my special case, then I can actually, I think... Maintain the invariant that there's always one of something. That, that the groups are always separated. Right? I don't... I don't copy all the blues just blindly. I read one of them. And then instead of just copying all the blues, I look at the next one. And I say, is it blue? If so, great. I'm going to be writing at least one more. Um, then I copy all the blues but one. But if I read one blue, or, or, but if I, yeah, if it's time to start copying blues, I've read one of them, and, and then I look at the next tape symbol and it's red, then I can say, now wait just a minute here. I can't just copy zero blues, that would leave the tape all smudged, right? Therefore, I say, oh, okay, I was... I was... I just... Mm, I'm about to make the length of blues become zero, rather than... So, yeah, so that's the difference. Instead of detecting there are zero blues on the tape now, I can instead detect I'm about to make the tape have zero blues in this location. And instead of doing that, don't do it, right? And similarly for both of these reds. The, the second blue we don't have to worry about because we know there's always one of them. Now, do you actually have to do the song and dance for all three groups? Or can you get away with only doing it for reds, say? don't do it for the middle blue, then you're going to end up right in getting into a situation where you have one blue and then a zillion reds, and that's your whole tape. And you're going to get confused when you try to read that. So I don't think you should do that. I think you have to do it for the blues. Do you have to do it for the reds, or could you leave them special? I think you probably should do it for the reds as well. Ugh. Okay. Why on earth do I have this? <laughs> I, I guess I had the idea that I was going to go from this state to this one, and then I realized, wait a minute, there are problems here. Okay. Do I want to do that this episode? I guess so. It's going to take some time. We might, we might go over an hour, but... <clears throat> I'd like to be able to say I did two puzzles this episode. Yeah, so just like all of you, please go away. So we start by writing one extra blue. We are guaranteed at least one red at the beginning, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Hmm. 
and we we again I think can probably arrange that we want to rewrite a blue when we get here. So I'll use this as my my in, my entry point. <clears throat> we we read a single red, which we are guaranteed is present because I will never re-enter re this state with zero reds on the tape or indeed zero reds before the first blue. So we're guaranteed we read that first red, which I guess means I can um, just have it be a straight line basically to go here. After reading the first red, I look for more reds, and in this case, <clears throat> there may or may not be any. If there is a red, <clears throat> then If there's a red, then there were at least two, which means I'm now writing at least one. Um, which means I will write a single red before entering a scanner which copies reds. Right? A single so there's there's at least two reds I write one of those two and then I copy the remainder that I find good if after reading one red I found a blue then <clears throat> then it should be very simple what to do next right there was only one red in this group and I read a blue from this group um, and I know there's at least one red left in this group, because if I had ever been about to write, if I, because I never replace a group with a group of size zero. So I know the right side of the bread has at least as much filling as the left half. Therefore, I just need to validate that there's at most, hmm. Exactly, in fact, uh, one blue filling so that it equals the left side. I know there can't be zero because I never would have written that. So I can just say, read the tape. Uh, if you find a second blue after the one you just found, reject the robot. Otherwise, accept it. Right? I think that's about right. Um, now I've copied all the reds from the first bit. And I've read a single blue from the middle. So I need to do the same little trick where I read. Mm, I probably wanted it to be the other way. Well. Yeah. I read one blue, and then before I start copying blues, I say, are there any more blues? If not, we just accept the robot because there was only one blue left in the middle, and we know the left and the right each had at least one, so we can accept. If there are any more blues, then I copy them, including one of the two I just read.
This is like coming out way more compact than I thought it would. It's kind of nice. So there are more blues, and I copied I copied the middle group of blues. Fine. Which we know has at least one left. But it might be only one, right? Sure, there might be only one middle blue. So if I run out, if I discover there's only one, hang on. What happens now if I discover there's only one red? I think I reject, right? Because we determined that now there's one, at least one blue, but that means before there were at least two blue. And I get here and there's only one red. Okay. So... Maybe I want it to look like this. So now I I read, cause I, I didn't, mm, I wanted to put another scanner right after this, but I need all the directions from it, so it couldn't, uh, I don't need the white direction. But, but I need it red and blue to go like here and here, which is impossible. Um. So, I put it down this way. Is that necessary? I'm not sure. So I, I, I have copied all the blues and I've read a single red. Now, give me another scanner where if I see no further reds, I reject. I'm, I'm sure we can do this more space efficiently by moving into here actually. I don't need to use this column, but for now, let's just do this. If I see no further reds, I reject. But if I do see a further red, then, yeah, in fact, let's actually try to be more efficient because I'm gonna to wanna to do that in a minute. How do I do that? Well, okay, let's 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 write the thing and then we'll try to make structure preserving or semantics preserving structural changes, let's say. So give me a new copier where I copy reds. Mm, no, hang on. I need to write one of these reds that I just read over. Uh There, like that. So I copy a red and then I copy the rest of the reds. When I get a blue, I know there's only one, so I don't have to do any weird copying of it. I just go back here. So does this make any sense? Suppose we test on, you know, red, 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 blue, blue, red, red. This should pass. Let's see what happens. So we write a blue and now we've got the invariant set up. We read something which we know is going to be red. And then we look for a second red, which we find. And we write the second one back and then also the third. But not the first, of course. Then we read a single blue and we say, if there's only one blue, at this point we can accept. But that's not the case. Oh, hang on. I read one blue. Right. There, there were two, so I don't accept immediately. I put back one of them. Copy the remaining zero, I think? Yeah. 
Then I get to the end and I read two reds and I say, yep, there were at least two, so I'm writing at least one, in this case exactly one. And I go back to the beginning and I've preserved the sandwich invariant where there's one of everything. I read the first two reds and I say, okay, I'll copy all one of the remaining, okay? Then I get here and I'm like, oh, I read a blue, that's the filling. Is there any more blue? Nope, I accept. All right, success. I was a little surprised that Jada could work at two competing businesses at the same time. Laughing, she told me she couldn't work for just one, neither paid her enough to get by. It was practically impossible to get by around here without an engineer's salary. So if Jada was going to support herself and her parents too, she'd have to do a few impossible things. Very positive spin on obvious satire here. Anyway, so... I got a medal for the number of scanners and stampers. I was I was perfectly efficient. Nice. Okay, so when I said I could improve area by some, it seems like I could, can cut out at least one row, and if I'm six by six, that should do it, right? Like, I don't need this space out here. I can move it in here. And that should help me on time as well? How, I, how much more time? I have to improve time by quite a bit, though, don't I? Oh, uh, no, not that much. Ah! Okay. So, we basically just need this structure somewhere. Um, as written, it's too wide to fit in here, I think. Is it? Um... What if I take this arrow and point it left? Then... The red would come out here, which would be this. And I can't just put the red scanner here. But I could put it here, with this thing going there, and this thing going, like, here, right? It's close to actually just being 25, but I think I can do 30. So, take this, put it there. Now this red needs to feed into a scanner, which we had put here, but I'm going to put it, hang on, it looked like this before, right? So the blue end needs to go into this junk, which means I am, oh, I'm in the wrong, I'm in a weird mode, okay, I see. So the blue end goes there, with that. The red end... <sighs> copies a red. I mean, I definitely can do this. I'm just, it's going to cost me a little on time to do it this way. Actually, wait, can I do it? There's, uh, I actually... So I'm actually using that space, right? I mean, I guess there's enough room over here to do what I want, right? I had to. Yeah, it's gonna hurt a lot on time, but uh, I could do like like that, right? Well, this is. Well, okay. 
let's just test this and make sure it actually was correct. Yeah. So was that better or worse on time? I don't know how to tell. It was worse because I have this different solution that was good at time, apparently. Okay. Well. I don't. There, there must be a way to squeeze this down a bit smaller, right? Show me the stats. Yeah. A few people managed only 10. Ah! Ten, huh? I feel like I was being pretty economical. I guess you can somehow avoid... I claimed that you need to maintain the invariant for... the red, the blue, and the red, but maybe you don't have to somehow. Maybe that's how they get away with just 10. So, okay. If we no longer care about area... For, for, if, we, if we want a solution that doesn't care about area, just time, then I can take this bit and put it over there. It's still not perfect, but I don't spend a lot of time on conveyor belts, right? Oh, and this is still only area 30. I cut out this entire column. I cost myself this, er, this row. I cost myself a column, but I gained a row. Still not faster than my fastest, though, I guess. Why? In this compact solution, I used five conveyor belts once each per loop. So I think I can just count the number of belts I have, basically, right? And there's five here. Okay, so it's equally fast. Okay, I can cut out a couple more belts like this. Um, and also some area? Oh my god. Um, if I take this... Hang on. If I just remove that and I put that here, right? Like that? So I do the copying here, but I, I, I arrange for it to be a vertical copy instead of horizontal. Okay, that's a cool improvement. That surely gets me a gold star. No? <laughs> I improved... by 15? Okay, my area is great. Oh, take that, pleasing fungus. We caught up to you. Okay, so I can I can I get rid of even more conveyor belts? Show me show me my longest. It's. I mean, 
four, eight. Four, ten, four, ten, four, nine. So the longest one has the largest slice of bread is size nine. Which makes sense, we have up to 29, so 10, 10, nine. Which means I go through this loop something like eight times, right? Because I don't ever remove the last one. So how much would I have to improve? How many conveyor belts would I have to remove if I got a bonus of eight for each of them? Shockingly, exactly two, right? To get to 307. means both of these have to go. Uh, <laughs> that's so hard. Um, this I mean okay so this this solution doesn't have to worry so much about area so if I found a way to like I see I think well but it, it still cares a lot about layout because if you if you use any conveyor belts to split up your layout you're kind of dead right like running out of brain juice uh, at this hour long episode. I, I'm not like I'm, I'm looking at this, but I'm not like thinking of ideas. I'm just like, huh, I want these to be gone. I wonder wonder what's up with that. They're not gone yet. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna declare a break here. Um, and maybe we'll get back to this puzzle in the next episode. But if so, it'll be after I solved it off camera. I don't think I'll be looking at this one on camera again. I'll just show you the solution if I ever do get around to it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.